Uh, welcome to another video in our Canyon Corset, a little course we decided to make on Canyon Rope Systems. This is definitely not the first video you should be watching about this topic. We went into single rope systems and twin rope systems and double rope systems. And he showed us, Brent Roth here, who likes to canyon a lot in the Pacific Northwest, he showed us a lot of different ways to do a lot of different things with a lot of different toys because he owns every toy you can imagine. <laughs> including all of these when you technically only need one of them. Uh, this is a palakoa, this is a critter, this is a hoodoo, and this is a resignator. Right. Resonator. Resonator. I added a G. I like to add letters for redundancy, apparently. Yes, you're good at that. <laughs> these all are symmetrical yep. in nature. Yep. They, uh, and you called this concept the hangman. Right. Because it kind of, this one looked mostly like yeah. a man that was hanging. Right, and hang person just sounds weird. Yeah, so he's gonna show us literally everything we learned in the entire course that you can do this with this one single device and it works with any of these devices. Yeah, some of them um, are a little bit easier to do these techniques with um, and you definitely need to be familiar with a few techniques and how to use these devices. You should know and understand how to cleat them off as a, as a tie off technique um, and that's how you can really slim down the amount of gear you need and still get a lot of different rope systems like we talked about out of using these devices, but you've gotta be really familiar with them. Wait, you have to know what you're doing? Yeah, it's oh, crazy. Weird. Um, so there's a lot of Canyon courses out there, a lot of Canyon resources out there. We're gonna link them all in the blog that this is going to be a part of. If you find this video, there's a link in the description below for the blog on the website that will put you in order of all these videos and point to these other resources that you will benefit a lot from. So you showed us like the Joker, and the Joker required two eight devices. Yep, or we used the totem. It was a Camp Ogo, the GG, the Kong GG is the same thing. It's, uh, it's a dual live friction device. Yep. Uh, you showed us what other devices? Not blocks, the standard blocks. standard figure eight for your eight blocks. Do every system with this. Right. Every tie off, every lock off, every block off. And right. the idea is that you're carrying just this, or would you also carry stuff in case you dropped it? So that's what's kind of nice is like, okay, these are expensive. Um, it's do I need this in order to do all these systems? You know, you don't. You, figure eights are a lot cheaper. These other devices are a lot cheaper, but then I gotta carry multiple ones. But I kind of look at it, well, if I'm becoming more of a technician and canning, having a spare one of these within the team really isn't a bad, bad Thing. It's nice to know how to use your tools in multiple ways. Right. What's an eight cost, roughly? I think you can get them for between eight and 12 bucks. Ironically, eight bucks. Yeah. Okay. And this is probably most 10 times. These, yeah, most of <laughs> these run between 40 and $50. Okay. So starting with a single rope system that's yep. static and not releasable, you could just literally just Tie yep. it. Don't need this, right? This you don't need it, just tie it. We're run it through and we covered that where I'm just gonna put a block on this other side or tie a knot, right? I don't need this device to do that. But how this does replace if I wanna make a releasable system, the fact that I do carry this in a configuration like this, so the um, securing device or what would be your uh, quick draw is already connected to it. Um, if I'm using this as a eight block, putting the device on here, pulling the bite and loading it up just like I would a normal eight is a good start. But this is where this is kind of nice is that I can take this guy and bring it back. Now this is the part where you need to be familiar with your device and setting some friction modes in here. And they have this center hole and if you're using a rope that's skinny enough, just passing it through that center hole, grabbing another leg. Yeah, that's not going anywhere. Yep, that's not going anywhere. That's not releasable though, is it? Oh, absolutely it is. Okay. You, you would just feed a little slack here to undo this. Of course. Yeah, so what I like and then with I this could do this is I still have the advantage of the friction options of this device, the way it's designed. So depending on what's going on with the lowering, I can easily move from high friction to low friction, just like you would on Repel. You can't do that with a regular figure eight in this configuration. And notice I did not have to remove or do anything here in order to do that. Now we pull test this in the lab. Uh, how many things did we break trying to break this? Put it this way, we broke enough stuff you were starting to get a little upset. 
<laughs> How many of your things we were breaking trying to break this? This is aluminum. A random steel carabiner off eBay that Bobby brought to the lab is finally, after pulling it above 30, 40 kilonewtons, is finally what broke this. And then in a basket shape, this sling is, uh, it's 22 kilonewtons, but in a basket it's 44. Yeah. And so this is super strong enough for anything we're covering in this video. Yeah, yeah. For, for Some people get wadded up about redundancy. Yeah, I wouldn't even be worried about two when, people on repel Once you have at all. 10 to one plus safety ratios, redundancy's not as important on the braking side of things as much as like an error issue. So the next system we can go into is the twin isolated releasable system. And we demoed uh, the Joker, um, the Totem version of it, the Jester. Uh, we use the Camp Ovo in kind of a, a Jester mode where I isolated the two strands with the device. So I can do the same thing with this. This is where I run the rope through the rappel ring and I'm gonna connect this to the rappel ring and it's hanging down here. I'm gonna reach through the head of the device and wrap this around. You just mirror it. Two arms, yep, on both sides. And so this isn't up, moving. Isolated one side from the other, going through the loop with friction. Is this conditional? Where you have to hang on to this tail? Yep, that's the definition of an of a but that's what isolated it was, release. And that's what was happening with our other options as well. Is yep. they all yep. required yep. you to either have somebody on this end or you holding it. Yep. Just like just like a uh, twin isolated system is what this is. So what I like about this versus some of the other ones is it's very easy to set up. It's nice and clean looking. I didn't need any extra gear. Um, some people might be concerned, especially when you're using some of the other devices that these aren't as closed, um, is that this is an open system. It's like, okay, well, could this fall off? This is why I say this is kind of an advanced technique. It requires a lot of attention to detail when you're building and using this. Um, the extra friction of all of these in here is what is particularly interesting is that I can fully load this and this is what still we need to pull test. And it's like, so in the event if somebody does let go of this accidentally, this isn't gonna take off me. But I could still keep, keep applying. I could still, yeah, without getting it. doesn't take my... much to, to release it. So yes, it's releasable, but it's it has higher friction than the other ones, whereas oh. if I let go of this or don't hang on to not it enough, yeah. if I'm not attentive, and somebody's on repel, start moving and... they'll start moving. And then even then, I can still increase more friction in the, if I needed to. So that is the twin isolated system, which is conditional. So for a twin compound system, that's when I'm gonna start with using both ends of the, either the same rope or two separate ropes, but I want to set rope length on each one of these ends, and the bag is either a double-ended rope bag of some kind is going to stay up here at the anchor with me. And I like if you double double stack your bag, um, or depending on what type of bag you are, if I can start rigging with both these ends, it is just as fast as rigging one line. But I'm gonna start by putting one of the ropes through the ring and the other one through. One through the ring. One through the ring, because that's gonna be my retrieval side, and the other one through the um, carabiner. Now this is where you do wanna be careful depending on what configuration. So I'm using a Dyneema sling here, but this would be creating a rub point. So I might not want to do that. So adding another carabiner for that, or if this was a small quick link, um, I could do that. What, I've no, what I don't like is having this directly on the carabiner. It does- You lose all some, the flexibility. You lose a lot of flexibility. Yeah. So again, this is why this is an advanced technique and requires that attention to detail. I don't want to just arbitrarily do because that. Because if this rope was rubbing through here, it's not just while you're feeding rope. No. This is eventually going to be like, if you need to lower someone, you're putting There's, weighted force. Weight rubbing on a weighted Dyneema strand, that is not any good. Yeah. So that, Rope on rope, ropes moving over ropes is yeah. bad. So to get around that, all you need to do is add another carabiner somewhere into the system. And I don't want to run this through the ring because that really limits the changing it when I want to retrieve it. So I do want to run it through something as a redirect because I do want that friction. Yep. So now I can pull Set the rope, rope length. length down and you'll notice this will look very familiar to the isolated. I'm gonna do the same thing with each strand. So this is on the rappel strand or the front side of the anchor as I refer to it. 
but you have a whole bunch of rope behind this now. And add friction, right. So now I've got these two friction on the front side on the rappel, and you can see it's symmetrical. I need to secure the back side, basically my brake strand on this. So by doing that is I can come in here and depending on your device, getting in a, a hitch, um, securing it with a type of hitch that will bite down on itself when it starts to load. So as that strand wants to move, it should grab the strand and not just pull through. So knowing how to cleat your device off properly for this will make a difference. And again, you don't want to run a cleat across the device because once I do that, you're pinching. I've act, I've I've, I've locked down one side from the other side, so I've kind of eliminated. So you're always standing on your, your half of the fence. Yep. So this strand stays on this side, so I want to be able to lock this off well with a good cleat of some kind, and then do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to want to lock this off with a good cleat. So now, now I've got a cleat on both sides. This is not dependent on you, like if I'm on repel, you can independently do something with this. Right. So these two sides are independent. Because you have a other. rope full of, or bag a, full. you have a bag full of rope yep. that you can individually, before it went through the ring directly, yep. and you couldn't feed this out without having slack on right. my side. Right. So this Com is where. Compound, twin compound, releasable. releasable. And this is where I can set rope length with both of these, and I cannot set rope length with both ends unless I happen to have just the right length of rope on an isolated system. So if I go down, I'm like, hey, Brent, I need 10 more feet. Right. In, in order not to make this giant jump into right. the pool, because you don't want a whole bunch of extra rope floating in the water. You want to be able to get off rope and swim away. Right. Yep. Here's the same system, twin compound, releasable with two separate ropes. So same I, exact thing. Same exact thing. Set up the same way. One is through the ring because yep. you're going to use that when you go down last. Yeah. So let's let's go through that. How do I retrieve this? Because um, it really takes... You don't want to leave this at every anchor? No. It really <laughs> takes um, uh, a lot less steps. So the catch is, is that the rope bag, if I'm using a double-ended rope bag, and this is the same, same rope, is that the bag would need to stay at the anchor. So you need to make sure that has a nice clean pull. But all I'm going to do is convert this into a block system, meaning that if this is my the rappel strand that I'm going to go through because it's the one that went through the ring, so that's the one I'm going to derig completely. And then I have my rappel strand, and this is going to be my pull side. Since this rope is already long enough going down the pitch, this is the one I'm going to use for the pull side. So since I rigged this with the, the redirect carabiner, I'm going to leave both of these in the system, but I can just clip this to one and then convert this to a carabiner block. And that is just as secure as a carabiner block. And the only weight that this will see is just enough to retrieve, retrieve my system. Are you taking this bag with you? Or are um, you going to clip it to this and have it come down with? So it depends on how much, how much rope I have and how much rope I want to pack. And how ledgy. And how ledgy it is. Like this, again, this is why it is advanced technique is there's a lot of variables that you need to look at here. But I don't need to reconstruct the whole thing and pull up if I didn't need to. Maybe because I've been doing the course with you, this doesn't feel hard. I feel like the advanced part is knowing when to apply each thing. Because yep. now I know like 30 different things for a canyon, but if I went down a canyon today, I'd be like, I don't know which one to use. Right. Like, and, th and that's exactly what I feel the definition of technician is being a good technician in any rope discipline doesn't mean I know a bunch of stuff. It means I know how to analyze the environment. How to use a bunch of stuff. How to make good decisions about when to use all the things that I know. That's kind of how I look at what's the difference of being a technician or a technical or advanced thing versus um, an operational of like, I can, do, I can do this system five different ways, awesome. And this is why you don't want to go down a canyon after watching a YouTube video or having book knowledge after learning a technique. It's really important to go with somebody who knows what they're doing, regardless of the sport or activity you're doing. So yep. I think Brent and I are going to go down a canyon. 
and he's gonna, we're gonna uh, have better audio on that round. And I think you're gonna quiz me before we get to the anchor. We're a couple feet away from the anchor. We're gonna be like, that's what the anchor looks like. This is the situation. And we'll make hypothetical, like I have a hypothetical rope length or a hypothetical group of newbies behind me because that will depend on what anchor I would right. rig if I was leading that group yeah. or leading just a team of two. It makes a lot more sense to go through the decision process actually in the environment. Because no the first time process. I went down, all you had me focus on was uh, don't not, die, not don't drowning. not yeah. drowning so I don't have to rescue you and teach me how to set rope length and communicate yep. things. Yep. I didn't even, I had no idea what he was doing up here. Yep. But the next time we go down, I'm gonna get quizzed. We'll see. <laughs> so make sure you subscribe to that. Uh, give us your email in our blog form. We'll have a place for that. So you can get updated. If you only want stuff about canyon stuff, you can do that. I'm not gonna spam you about caving and climbing or highline stuff if that's not what you're interested in. I did write a paper explaining and going all of this stuff. That's gonna be in the that, blog that is, well. that is the blog about this video. Yep. And uh, it's gonna be actually multiple blogs and we're gonna put them in order. And it's all gonna be all the stuff he wrote f that actually originated or was the birth of this course. Uh, do you have any final thoughts? Uh, no, I think that about covers it. Cool, see ya. Oh, dude, you gotta tell me when you're gonna do the rope thing.